grab your Wargaming notes. I know you were taking them during yesterday's video when we played through On Guard Swashbuckling Skirmish Wargame Rules by Osprey Wargames, written by Craig Woodfield. We are going to play through the second half, and I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time. We're just going to dive right in. For those of you that have not watched the first video, the Blue Jackets, the, um, what do you call them, the Republican soldiers have been sent out of Paris and dispatched to the Vendée to stop those filthy farmers from engaging in their uh, their superstitious practices like going to church on Sundays. And the squad that was sent to board up the church was stunned to find out that the people in the Vendée take that stuff seriously and have given them a big emphatic no said message to be delivered at the barrel of a gun and the point of a spear and with a blade of an axe and whatever other weapons they had handy. So without further ado, we take you to the next turn of War in the Vendée using On Guard. Thanks for watching. Again, we have to dice for priority, and again, the blues have priority. So this time, he's going to say, why don't you charge... He's going to give both of these guys a charge order, and they're going to run over to engage the man with the gun that shot at him. So they've all moved. Now it's time for La Vendée. And he's going to spend his entire move reloading his weapon. He's already in combat. He's Everybody's already done everything they can do. Now, you can break from combat, but he's comfortable with where he is. We'll do that one more time. Which means the farmers who can move, that's a two-inch move. And, uh-oh, now you're in trouble. That's four inches, and then we've got another guy behind the counter here or behind the uh, pub, so because you've got a three-on-one, he'll fight with a minus one to his characteristic. I don't know if these guys can get there or not, but they're going to try. So that's a two-inch move and a four-inch move, so not quite, not quite. He'll go two, and then I think he'll move to here to engage this guy. So in order to keep that from being too big a gang, ganging up on he'll run over here so we actually have a total of one two three combats and because the blues have priority uh, he stopped just short because the blues have priority bear in mind he does not have a weapon all he has is his saber he gets to decide which combat's going to happen first and he'll take this one thank you very much because what you've got is a, well, we're going to walk through the entire process. The first thing we have to do is roll for initiative. And because he has a spear, so we have a tie roll, but because his threshing device is classed as a spear for today, he has a plus two initiative. So his total is a seven. His total is a seven, meaning we got to roll again. And in this case, the farmer gets priority first. He only gets to draw one gem, so we'll do... We'll shake those up just so you can see I'm playing it honest. And this is one of the reasons it took me so long to get to this game. It'll be two actions for the blue. Couldn't quite figure out how to play a game like this solo, where if you're playing this against a live opponent, it becomes far more interesting because there is a lot of bluffing going on. As I said, he can opt to make his first attack. Now, you'll note that with the defense token here, it's going to get interesting. But I don't see that he has any option. I think he's got to make the attack. Force him to burn that defensive token. The other thing you can do is defer and let him make the first attack, but the results are going to be the same. The only difference is whether he does the damage first or you do the damage first. So we'll go ahead and, and, and declare that. That costs him that, and then the defender has to declare it. He says, yeah, heck yeah, I'm going to parry. I need that extra die. So it'll be a two against two. The farmer has a fight skill of one. The soldier has a fight skill of two. And that is all we got. So, adding a one to this, we get a nine. Adding a two to this, we get an eight. So that's an 
So 8 versus 9, he wins by 1, which is a stun result. A stunning upset by the farmers. And that stun result means, I think what we'll do is we'll just knock him down. Hey, you're stunned. Uh, and he doesn't have to stand up or anything. That's just a visual representation of his current status. He has a minus one to initiative, a minus one to shoot, and he has a stun counter. So he's got a minus one to fight. And some other stuff goes on. Okay, but we don't need to worry about that right now. What we need to worry about is the second... Oh, you know. So he's stunned, but he still has a, an attack action, doesn't he? So he's going to take it. And this time, the die rolls are going to be like this. So without that parry, you can be in some big trouble. Unfortunately for him, when you add 2, you add 2, you get an 8 versus a 7. So he wins by 1, but he's not attacking. All this means is there's no effect. Moving on to the second combat. He says, oh, I don't like the looks of this. We're going to do this one next. So we'll shake him up. And this time it's going to be, oops, i got to throw that one in there too. This time it's going to be a two-on-two. Two. Drawing for the blue, we get an attack and a defense. And drawing for the farmer, we get two attacks. So we have to check for initiative. We roll two dice. And I think it's pretty obvious that the farmer has the initiative in this case. He says, you know, not only am I going to attack... Would you like to defend? Heck yes, I would like to defend. Well, I'm going to do a mighty blow. So we wind up with a 3 versus a 2 for our dice off. I think this is probably a better place to roll it. Says, ah, I got an 8 and a 2, which I will discard, compared to a 5. We have to add the fight scores. 2 versus 2. So we have a 10 versus a 7. A difference of three is a, forgive me, I haven't memorized this yet. Because the attacker won, that difference of three is a light wound, minus one initiative, minus one to fight, and minus one to shoot. Here's some fire for you, Mr. Bluecoat. And that takes effect immediately. So he has an attack that he can throw down, take a swing with that bayonet, but this time there's no defense. Now the good news is it's going to be two attack dice versus one defense die. And the bad news is eight versus five. He's at a minus one, so that becomes he's plus two for his skill, minus one for the wound, so he is at a total of plus one. So that's a nine, that's a seven. A difference of two means another light wound. So they're trading light wounds this round. And there's that light wound token. And they're all done. Now we've got one more over here. In this case, what's going to happen? Because we have a guy with a fight pool of two, and we've got three guys with a rank of one. So drawing first for the blue, he gets his one of each. And then these guys all fight essentially as one. Their combat pools all get added up. So I'm going to draw out three, and what we're left with is one defense, and two attacks. But we don't know who has the initiative just yet. We still have to roll for initiative. It gets a little bit complicated. It's easy for the blue. He gets a total of seven. For these guys, we've got two guys with spears, and they each roll threes. And then we've got a guy with a big axe, and he rolls a two. So... Our soldier gets the initiative. He gets to make the first attack, and he's going to go ahead and burn his attack. And he is going to attack the guy with 
oh, you know, I've actually got two guys with axes, one with a spear. He's going to attack the guy with the spear, I think. And now the guy with the spear can take advantage of any of these. He's going to go ahead and defend. But each of these guys can only make one ploy or one maneuver, if you will, because they're all rank one. They're, 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 they're the cheap guys, right? So we have a straight two versus two with the blue on the attack. And the blue rolls a five, adds his skill of two, so his total score is a seven. The farmer gets a total of six. Meaning, oh, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. He's outnumbered three to one. So he has an extra minus one to his roll. So he only adds one. We've got a seven versus a seven, no effect. And now Mr. Axeman can expend one attack and it's going to look like this. And to make matters worse, that, ooh, you know what? I actually got it wrong. That axe gives you plus one to initiative. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. That's the plus one. That axe actually does plus one to the wound. So when you have nine versus, uh, again, now he's at a two, so that's a difference of eight. And that plus one to the wound, I think he's out. I think he's out. I'm going to double check. I missed something on those guys. They have a minus one to their initiative. So the guys with the axes actually have an initiative bonus of zero. They also get a plus one to their wound score. Now, taking it from an eight to a nine doesn't make a difference as long as your difference is seven. But that could come in handy later. That's the second soldier who's been put on the ground, which means when all the fighting is done, and I think it is. Oh, there's one last maneuver you can make. If you're not engaged in combat, and you have an attack action, and this guy has not made his action, you can spend an attack action to move up to three inches. And he'll take advantage of that. So he moves up to there. And that's almost the end of the turn. We need to do morale. As I said at the start of the game, they don't have the best morale. Fortunately, they have a commander, which gives them a plus one or a minus one to their roll. Their morale score is a six. You don't test your morale when you lose a quarter of your forces. You lose, you test morale if 25% of the starting strength of the warband suffered a critical wound in the previous turn. which they lost that guy in the previous turn, and they lost that guy. So that's happened, so they've got to check. And you you add a couple of modifiers. If you're below 50% strength, which they're not. If you're below 25, which they're not. If you have a mo warband with the commander attribute, which they do. So that commander means they subtract one from this roll. They've got a morale of six, so they need to roll a seven or higher. And they don't. With a result of a four, their morale is now wavering. They're beginning to lose the will to fight. That means that every time you activate a model in order to move it, you have to roll a d6 and add its rank and get a seven or more to move the model. Otherwise, it makes a run move towards the nearest table edge. Okay, that's nine inches. Models that are engaged are not affected. So he's engaged because he's stunned. Remember, he's laying down, but he's not actually laying down. He just, uh, he just got his bell rung pretty good. So we're going to start off the next round by rolling a d6 for each side. And we get a three and a three, which means we need to roll off. We get a four and a three. So once again, 
Although their morale's not the greatest, they seem to be a little bit more motivated than the farmers. So the Blues get to go first. Now, he would like to take a maneuver. He would like to... Hmm, he's going to go ahead and charge this guy. He thinks he can take him. Uh, he is a rank three, so he really needs to get stuck into combat. And, yeah, so that's all he does. He just says, whoop. Then it's time for the Vendee. They're going to move, this guy is going to move into combat with this stunned feller. And then the stunned fella is going to... You can remove a stunned counter if you can rest, but you can't rest when you're in combat. So there's really nothing he can do. Except wait for it. And that's it. Those are, the, those are the only two guys. Now there's another blue floating around here somewhere, isn't there? Oh, I'm sorry. You know what we did? Yeah, he can't move. Okay, so these guys are fighting. All right, we're getting there. Um, he's the only guy that was not already engaged. So we're going to bring him. He's going to make his normal move straight line to here. And then these guys are going to run to here and here and since they can run they have to stop when they get to within one inch they'll stop right there and he's going to go ahead and just drift right over here we don't want him getting killed that's five victory points so he's going to go hide out behind the pub and everything is really condensing down to here so let's just tighten up a little bit more on those guys shall we there is a bit of a balancing act here between being close enough to really show off the eye candy of the miniatures and also far enough away that I've got room to roll dice where you can see it. Mr. Commander has a priority and he really wants to put at least one body on the ground so he's going to go ahead and attack that guy mano y mano. Now he has a fight skill of three so he's pretty confident he can take it. Uh, he does have a pistol, but he's much more comfortable using that sword. And against a regular farmer, we are looking at three... You guys are just going to have to trust me on this. Mr. Blue has got two attacks and a defense against a guy with just one attack. So this isn't going to be pretty. Uh, he may score his first and only victory point here. First we roll for initiative. And he is, oh, he's our pike man. Look at that. He's got a halberd, rather. So that halberd gives him a plus one to initiative. And that means he's got a total of plus two, where he's got a total of plus three. So roll him fairly close. So four versus four. We got to roll again. And this time we get a three versus a four. He gets to do his first attack, and he's going to go ahead and just put it all into one mighty swing. White dice are for the blue this time round. And, oh, they're getting away from me, aren't they? The orange dice is for Mr. Defense. He has no defense, so, oh, it's going to be three versus one. Oh, this could get ugly. So our total attack dice is a seven, plus three is a ten. Am I missing anything there? That's a 10. Nope. And he's got a total fight score of 1. So he rolled a 2, 8 wounds. That is a critical, and he's done for. Didn't even get a chance to attack. So there's one victory point. But that may be just about it. Now... It is the Vendee's turn to pick a fight, and of course, he's going to want to pick this one right here. Since Mr. Stunned there is going to have a minus one to his initiative. And uh, I, wish this, I wish this quick reference was a little easier. 
I, I really like the layout of these, but these Osprey books, but I'm really, I've never been impressed with their quick reference sheets. They just, uh, they're a little small and a little clunky to use. So what do we got for stun? Minus one initiative. That's really about it. So first we'll roll our initiative scores, and it's going to be a plus one to each of these dice. And once you know it, we get a straight tie, so we'll roll again. Second tie, we'll roll again. And now we get, uh, he gets to go first. Uh, oh no, you know what? He gets to go first because of his minus, no, that's right. One and one to initiative, he gets to go first. Let's draw them, let's draw them fight tokens. He's stunned, he's going to, oh, look at that. So he says, I can't attack. Do you want to attack? Yes, I'd love to attack. Thank you. And with two defensive tokens, uh, all he can really do is the one parry. It's just going to be the one round of attack for Mr. Spearman there. Wait a minute. I did that all wrong. He actually gets to, he gets the initiative. He gets to attack first. I mean, it doesn't make a difference, but Spears give you a plus two. So he gets a plus three to his roll. He gets a plus one to his roll. So he has the initiative. He attacks first. He says, let's do it. And we've got a total of 11 for the farmer, five for the, uh, 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 for the blue. No armor, no nothing. Those, that difference of six means that is a critical wound. So he is eliminated. Six victory points to one victory point. How about that? Now the blues get to go. There's really only one more fight left to do. He's going to go ahead and attack the farmer with just a fight skill of one. Uh, no, that's not how this works. He says, look, I'm just going to fight here, okay? And I can disengage, but uh, we're just going to play through the fight thing because I want to get a little more comfortable with this so we're ready for the next scenario. And, again, we've got uh, two versus three for our combat pools. So the blue boy gets to attack, and the... Other guys get three defense. Oh, they're just kind of biding their time over here, aren't they? All right. So, he gets to attack first. He's going to attack this guy first. And he's going to go ahead and just do a straight-up attack versus a straight-up defense. Now, you know what? He's going to do a power attack. He's got to try to get those numbers down. So, it'll be a three versus two with the blue rolling... Um, I'm going to move this out of the way just so that keep these dice relatively close where you can see them. Five versus five. Well, that's interesting. Because he's got a fight score of two, and he's got a fight score of one, so that becomes a difference of one, and he becomes merely stunned. And that's it. Then the question becomes, would you like to counterattack? And he can't because he doesn't have any attack options. So that's the end of the turn. The morale phase kicks in. I totally forgot. He was supposed to roll. And if he didn't get a four or better, he would have to run. He was supposed to roll. And he made his, so he got to stick around and do his fight. But because they're wavering, I gotta remember, these guys have to roll... Add their rank and try to get seven. Okay. So he cheated a little bit. It's very aggressive, but we'll give him that. In the meantime, their morale is wavering. And I don't think they have to take another morale check. Mm. Mm. No, they only take morale checks. Oh, it takes, if they are wavering, they have to make another morale check. Okay, so they do have to make a morale check. Uh, they get a f five, four, so they are committed to continuing the fight. So we move on to the next to the next round. I think this is only like the fourth turn. This game moves quick, doesn't it? So here's our initiative roll, and we get a four for the farmers, and a th 
three, four. So finally, he does not get his initiative that he was hoping for. So for priority, we're going to go ahead and bring this guy into hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that pretty much locks everybody up so that uh, he can break away if he wants in a hand-to-hand -hand melee, but that's about it. So we're going to go three-on-three three over there. And everybody else passes. I think he might actually have to check to see if he runs. Uh, and... Huh. I gotta look this up. No, I don't. I just remembered. If you're already engaged, you don't actually have to do that D6. So that's why it didn't apply for last turn. He's engaged. The D6 to see if you hightail it. If you boogie on down this old dirt road, doesn't apply. So here we are with the Vondeans having priority, and we've got we've got three guys who are stunned here. It's a very stunning combat. But we're going to start with it. We're going to start with our, our toughest boy here, and that means we are at... Everybody's initiative is reduced by one. Our combat pool for him is going to be... Oh, you know, I was using the wrong color marker there. This should be a green marker for stun. Blue is reload. So he's fighting a, a defensive fight, and the farmers are also playing it very fairly defensive. We're gonna give. Oh man, that's interesting. All right, we're gonna give. We're gonna give him his attack, and he's gonna spend his defense, and it becomes pretty simplified. Just a straight two versus two, because he's the one doing the attacking. Uh, did I forget to roll for initiative? I think I did. But I don't think it matters, because there's only one guy attacking. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So it's going to be a straight two versus two. Uh, and blue rolls a two. Adds his two, so he rolls a total of four. And he, oh, he rolls a total of seven, the difference of three. It's going to be another light wound. And when you already have a light wound, and you take another light wound, bad things happen. They immediately become a grievous wound, which is minus two to initiative, minus two to fight, minus two to shoot. Oh, you know what? You know what? I forgot. He's at a minus one to his fight, so he's fighting at a one, so that's a score of three. Oh, and he's fighting at a minus one, so it's, it's the same difference. He's fighting at, he, that's a three versus a six, so that three. Again, this wound becomes a grievous wound. And we'll use yellow. And then we have to do this combat over here, which pits a combatant with a skill of three, so first four, the blue, against three guys that each get a one, so it's a one, one, and one. And we're going to have to roll for initiative, and the initiative for the commander, he adds a plus one, so he gets a total of two. The guy that's fighting with the spear has a plus two to his initiative, so he gets a six, and then axeman number one and axeman number two. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna turn that to what it actually is. That becomes a two because of the plus one. This becomes uh, the big axe is actually at a, he's at a minus one. So this becomes a four, and then this one becomes, that's another spear, that actually becomes a seven. So this spear fella gets to go first. And he's going to... What is, how does he want to do this? Let's go ahead and walk through the options here. He can attack, which will immediately follow with a blue counter. So it'll be a two versus two. Or he can pass, 
and say, would you like to attack first? And force him to burn these two. I think that's going to be a mistake, though. Because even if he burns these two, he's still going to have that. So yeah, I think we have to take the attack right out of the gate. And yeah, the blue is going to negate that so that it becomes a simple 2d6 versus 2d6. Um, and he goes last. So all three of these guys are going to get actions. Again, not that it matters. It's going to be a straight 2 versus 2 with the red dice adding 2 and the white dice adding... He's a spearman, right? Yeah, one. So it's going to be plus two to the red, plus one to the white. That becomes an eight. That becomes a four. No damage. And it is his turn. So the question becomes, does he want to use... Uh, does he want to make two separate attacks? And I, given that there's... N Ooh, we've got two defenders here. Hmm. He has already used his action. So he's going to make a mighty blow against him. Making it a... Ah, you know what? He's just going to go ahead and make it a regular attack against him. That's going to be... And then he'll... Yeah, oh, of course I'll defend. So that one is going to be... Hmm, no, he's going to go ahead and do the heavy blow. He might as well. He's at a minus one, so it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be uh, plus two to the red... Plus one to the others, so that is a ten versus a five for a difference of five, which is a grievous wound. And that grievous wound is going to be a yellow chip. Minus two to fight and shoot and shoot. You really needed to kill that guy. That's the end of the combat there. And that's the end of the turn. Is it not? Yeah, they went, they went, it's the end of the turn. Uh, they're all engaged, so we can, oh, we need to check morale, though. And I'll tell you why, so five, because if you fail that roll, which he didn't, but if he did, so remember they're trying to roll a an eight or higher would be a failure. If he had failed that roll, then the morale would fall from wavering to utterly collapsed. And what's the word that they use for this? Uh, wavering routing. When you route, you withdraw. Every model rolls a d6 or makes a run, whether or not. Let's see. Engage does, yeah, against stays that way for the rest of the game. So once you're wavering, you can recover. Is that right? Uh, test. If the morale test is equal or less, the following will happen. The more it's currently wavering. Oh, you know what? So the last turn that they succeeded, they actually improved to steady, which means I didn't need to make that check right there. Now we're learning. Hmm. But it looks really ugly for the blues. I don't see any way they can pull this off, but we'll go ahead and fight it through to the bitter end. We'll roll for initiative first, and the farmers gain the initiative. Or perhaps I should say priority, because there's no moving, there's no running, there's no shooting. Uh, yeah, that's, actually, you know what, they, this is the one guy that can move into combat, so that we've got a two-on-one right here. And I think, you know, let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and bring this guy around to about there. We may want to have that three-on-one. We're going to do this combat over here first. And that's going to be two for the blue. That guy, man, he does not want to do any attacks. And we've got three for these guys. So we have to check initiative, and we're going to roll for him first. So he got a 2. That Grievous Wound means he got a minus 2. So he rolled a 0 with his plus 2. So he's got a total of 2. These guys each have Light Wounds. So they have minus 1 to their initiative. Uh, they both have 
a straight up initiative of whatever I roll here. So it's going to be two, and then these are straight rolls, two and three. So whatever happens, he's going to go last. These are straight rolls. So he actually gets to attack first. Look at that. But he doesn't have any attacks. So what's the point? The point is he can make a mighty blow and roll three dice versus his two. And the assist doesn't do a whole lot of good. See, this would be much better if, if, if I wasn't just pulling them randomly. You could exercise a little bit more uh, control over these. But that's all right. It's going to be three dice versus two dice. Uh, that extra that extra might make all the difference in the world. So that is an eight. Uh, made one point of difference, but we'll take it. That is an eight for him. And he is only lightly wounded. So he has a minus one to his fight skill. And his fight skill is normally a two. So he adds one to the duel. So he winds up with a total of nine, and he is grievously wounded. So he winds up with a fight skill of zero. That's a seven, and he's out. One more victory point, and it's really not looking good. There's the last combat for you. Now he's going to nominate, and we roll for initiative. So we will roll for Mr. Spearman. Mr. Axeman and Mr. Now he's at a minus, so he's going to go last. And then for our commander, gets to go first. So the commander is going to start out by, well, I don't know. I have to draw some, some gems. And Commander Blue is going to have one attack to play with. And his buddies there playground on the steps of the church are going to have a little bit more but he gets to make the first attack and he's going to start by attacking this guy so that guy will defend and that's where we're at a two versus two two versus two there are other ploys if you have combat master you can do a feint which means I am on the attack, and I'm not actually attacking you. We, we roll off as normal, and if I win, I get another attack. So it's a great way to burn off those extra defense tokens. You also have a repost, which if you're a weapon master, if you're a fencing master like the Three Musketeers, that repost is what you do on defense. And if you win the roll, you flip it, and now you can do some damage. Oh, sorry, Mr. Tree. Who speaks for the trees? Anyway, we are rolling a combat between these two guys. He's at a minus two, so he doesn't get any bonuses, but he doesn't need him to win this fight. 11 versus a 10 is not going to do any good. So now he gets to make an attack, and that costs one, and our commander is going to defend. He's going to parry. He's pretty confident about this. He's got a uh, fight skill of three versus a fight skill of one. And yeah, yeah, that's going to be a win for the defender. And then for that last combat, it's, ooh, now we need to think about this a little bit. He's chopping away with an axe. He's got a fight skill of one, and he is unhurt. So that's a total of eight. The commander has a fight skill of three for a total of five. Those That difference of three gives him a light wound. And I think with that, the commander is going to go ahead and um, surrender. He couldn't get through this turn. He couldn't break free of that cordon. And on the next turn... It's just going to get ugly. He's going to be dealing with a massive fight pool, particularly because I'm going to bring this guy in. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to look something like this. 
Now let's check it out just for giggles. He's going to say, oh, here's my three. I'm going to attack twice. And when you've got a total of five coming at you, let me just make sure I get the right number there. One, two, three. Three defenses. Four defenses plus an attack. Huh. Interesting. Nobody wants to do the killing blow. I guess that's because they really don't like the idea of killing a man on the front steps of the church. The good people, these Vendeans. And the French Revolution done them dirty. But, in these early days of the counter-revolution, when they were fighting a bunch of a bunch of backwater boys, guys who didn't really want to be there and were a little unsettled and a little uncertain of the prospects of burning down churches or stabbing their fellow French countrymen, the Republicans had a tendency to just run off, leave fully loaded cannons unfired because they weren't bad people. They were just ordered to do bad things by bad people, and they just did their jobs. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? You've heard that one. History is rife with such things. So I guess this is uh, historically accurate, that the citizens chased off the Republicans. In time, when the French Republic, the, the savages in Paris, realized that these uprisings, and it wasn't just the Vendée, it was all around France, were going to be a real threat, they mobilized the actual army to come crush them and darn near genocide them. But that's a story for for the books. We don't like to play those kind of things out on the table. We like a little bit of dashing, a little bit of elan. We like uh, the story of underdogs triumphing in the face of evil. We like to play the game out and see what happens. And hey, sometimes the bad guys win. That's just the way life rolls. When it happens, uh, we understand that there may not be justice in this world, but there's justice in the next. And so we can pick ourselves up and march through tomorrow and the next day and the next day content and secure in the knowledge that in the fullness of time, justice will be done. The history may not even be written all that accurately, but that's okay. Because you don't have to trust the history books. There's really only one place for you to put your trust. And you know where that is. Keep doing that. I'm in your corner. I'm on your side. I might not be able to do much for you financially, but I am definitely fighting the battle for you spiritually. Thanks for playing along with me. Thanks for enjoying a little bit of swashbuckling fun with On Guard. And until next time, I'll be praying for you.